In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the slope of a line between two points. So let's say if we have the point 2, 5 and the point 6, 13. What is the slope between these two points? Let's call this x1 and x2. And this is going to be y1 and y2. The first number is the x variable. The second one is the y variable. Now we can use this formula to calculate the slope. It's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So basically it's the change in y divided by the change in x. Now we define y2 to be 13 and y1 is 5. x2 is 6, x1 is 2. 13 minus 5, that's equal to 8. And 6 minus 2, that's equal to 4. Now we got to reduce it. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. So this is the slope between these two points. And that's how you could find it. Now let's work on some more examples. Try this one. Let's say if we have the point 3, negative 4, and also negative 5, positive 2. So go ahead and take a minute and calculate the slope between these two points. So what I like to do is identify the x and y variables. And now let's use the formula. So the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So the second y value is 2. The first y value is negative 4. And then divided by x2, which is negative 5, minus x1, which is positive 3. 2 minus negative 4 is basically the same as 2 plus 4. Negative 5 minus positive 3 is the same as negative 5 minus 3. 2 plus 4 is 6. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Now, we need to reduce the fraction. Both numbers are even, so we can divide 6 and 8 by 2. Half of 6 is 3. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. So the slope is negative 3 divided by 4. Try these two examples. 3 comma 6 and 5 comma 6 and also 4 negative 1 and also 4 comma negative 8. Go ahead and calculate the slope between each pair of points. So let's start with the first one. Let's call this x1 and y1, and this is going to be x2 and y2. So we know the slope m is y2, which is 6, minus y1, which is also 6, and x2 minus x1, so that's going to be 5 minus 3. 6 minus 6 is 0, and 5 minus 3 is 2. 0 divided by anything is equal to 0, so the slope is 0. Whenever the slope is 0, that means that you have basically a horizontal line. The horizontal line could be y equals 2, y equals negative 1. It doesn't really matter, but it's a horizontal line. The slope for any horizontal line is always 0. Now what about the second example? Let's calculate the slope. So m is y2, which is negative 8, minus y1, which is negative 1, divided by x2 minus x1 which are both equal to 4. Negative 8 minus negative 1 is the same as negative 8 plus 1. Whenever you have two negative signs next to each other, you can change it into a positive sign. 4 minus 4 is 0. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. Whenever you have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction, it's undefined. We really don't have a value for negative 7 divided by 0. So the slope, all we can do is say it's undefined. But what does that mean in terms of a graph? Basically, the graph is a vertical line. A vertical line has an undefined slope. So if you were to uh, plot these two points,
let's say the point 4, negative 1, and also 4, negative 8. 4, negative 1 would be somewhere over here. And if we plot 4, negative 8, it would be in this region. So if you connect these two points with a straight line, you're going to get a vertical line. So the slope of any vertical line is always undefined. Sometimes, you may have a point that contains a fraction. In a situation like this, how would you find the slope between these two points? Go ahead and try it. So let's say this is x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2. So m is the change in y divided by the change in x. It's basically the rise divided by the run. So in this problem, we can see that y2 is 1 over 5, y1 is 1 over 2, x2 is negative 1 over 3, and x1 is 3. So how do we calculate the slope now that we have this complex fraction situation? What you want to do in order to simplify a complex fraction, at least the best method I think, is to clear away all fractions. So if we look at the smaller fractions, we have a denominator of 5, 2, and 3. What is the least common multiple of 2, 3, and 5? If you're not sure, you can use any multiple. It doesn't really have to be the least common multiple. The quickest way to find a multiple that would clear away the fractions is to multiply 2, 3, and 5. You can write out a list of numbers until you find a common multiple, but this is a simple and fast technique. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction by 30. This will allow me to clear away all small fractions within the larger fraction. So let's distribute. What is 30 times 1 over 5? 30 divided by 5 is 6. So 1 -fifth of 30 is 6. Half of 30, or 30 divided by 2, that's 15. Now we need to multiply the bottom part by 30. Whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. 30 times 1 third, or 30 divided by 3 is 10. But since we have negative 1 third, this is going to be negative 10. Next, 30 times negative 3, that's negative 90. And now let's simplify. 6 minus 15 is negative 9. And negative 10 minus 90 is negative 100. Whenever you have a negative number divided by a negative number, it's going to equal a positive number. So this is 9 divided by 100. So that is the slope of the line between these two points. Now, for the sake of practice, let's try another similar example. So let's say if we have a point 1 over 3, comma, negative 1 over 4, and another point, negative 2 over 5, positive 1 half. So go ahead and pause the video. Calculate the slope between these two points. So first, let's identify the points. So m is going to be y2, which is 1 half, minus y1, which is negative 1 fourth, divided by x2, which is negative 2 over 5, minus x1, which is 1 over 3. Now, 1 half minus 1 fourth, I mean 1 half minus negative 1 fourth, that's 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4. So now, let's go ahead and simplify the complex fraction. So what is the multiple of 2, 4, 5, and 3 that we can use to clear away everything? Well, we need a 5, we need a 3, and we need a 4. We really don't need to multiply 2 and 4 because 4 is sufficient to get rid of 2 and 4. 4 is a multiple of 2, so we don't really need to use 8. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 4 is 60. If you multiply 60 by 2 and use 120, that should be fine as well. 
The only difference is that in the end, you're going to have to simplify the fraction. But you can still get the same answer. But I'm going to use 60. 60 is the least common multiple between 2, 4, 5, and 3. If you use the least common multiple, you don't really have to simplify the fraction at the end. If you use another multiple that's higher than the least common multiple, then yes, you're going to have to simplify. Now let's multiply the top and the bottom by 60. So let's distribute 60. 60 times a half, or 60 divided by 2, that's going to be 30. And 60 divided by 4 is 15. Now, what is 2 fifths of 60, or negative 2 fifths of 60? You can multiply and then divide, or divide first. I'd like to divide first. 60 divided by 5 is 12. And 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. So negative 2 fifths of 60 is negative 24. 1 third of 60, or 60 divided by 3, that's going to be 20. Now, 30 plus 15 is 45. And negative 20 minus, I mean, negative 24 minus 20, that's negative 44. So we can't really reduce this fraction. So that's the answer, negative 45 divided by 44. And so this is it. Consider this problem. Let's say if the first point is 3 comma y, and the second point is 2 comma 5. And you're given the slope, which is, let's say, 3 over 4. What is the value of y? How can we find the value of y? Sometimes you may see a question like this when doing your homework. And to figure out the answer is not that bad. First, let's rewrite the formula. m is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. We have m. We know the value of x1 and y1. We don't know the value of, well, I take that back. That's supposed to be x2. We don't know the value of y1. We have the value of y2. So m is 3 over 4. y2 is 5. y1 is y. That's what we're looking for. x2 is 2. x1 is 3. So basically, we need to solve for the variable. So let's cross multiply. Actually, before we cross multiply, we could simplify 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so let's replace it with negative 1. Now let's cross multiply. 3 times negative 1, that's going to be negative 3, and that's equal to uh, 4 times 5 minus y, so we've got to distribute the 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times negative y is negative 4y. Now we got to solve. Let's subtract both sides by 20. Negative 3 minus 20 is negative 23, and that's equal to negative 4y. So now we've got to divide both sides by negative 4. So y is equal to 23 over 4. That's the answer. Here's another example. Negative 1 half, comma, 1, 3, and x, comma, 1, 4. Now let's say the slope between the two points is negative 5 divided by 3. What is the value of x? That's a terrible question mark. Let's do that again. So we're going to say this is x1 and y1. We're looking for x2. And we have y2. So m is the change in y minus the change in x. So we have m. m is negative 5 over 3 y2 is 1 fourth, y1 is 1 third, x2 is x, x1, that's going to be negative a half. So how can we find the value? What can we do in this problem? Well, let's go ahead and cross multiply. There's two things we could do. We could cross multiply now, or we could simplify the complex fraction. And the order really doesn't matter. But you know what? Let's simplify the complex fraction first. So on the right side, we have 1 fourth minus 1 third. And x minus negative 1 half is the same as x plus 1 half. So what should we multiply the top and bottom by to get rid of the three fractions? Well, if we use a 4, that can clear away the 4 and a 2. 
and we needed 3, so let's use 12. Let's multiply the top and the bottom by 12. 1 fourth of 12, or 12 divided by 4, that's 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then x times 12 is 12x. Half of 12 is 6. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So we have negative 1 divided by 12x plus 6. This is equal to that. Now let's cross multiply. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And negative 5 times 12x plus 6, we need to distribute. Negative 5 times 12x, that's negative 60x. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. So let's add 30 to both sides. Negative 3 plus 30 is 27. And now let's divide both sides by negative 60. So we have 27 over negative 60, which we can reduce it. Both numbers are divisible by 3. Negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9. 60 divided by 3 is 20. And that's as far as we can go. So x is equal to negative 9 over 20. And so that's it. Now let's say if you're given a linear equation. What is the slope of this equation? This equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, the slope in a set form. The number in front of x is the slope, that's m. This number on the outside, that's b, that's the y-intercept. So the slope for this problem is 2. So try this one. Let's say if it's 5 minus 2 thirds x. What is the slope and what is the y-intercept? Now in this problem, it's in the reverse order. The slope is simply the number in front of x. So the slope is negative 2 thirds. You've got to incorporate the negative sign as well. The y-intercept is positive 5. It's basically the constant without the x. Now sometimes, you might be given an equation that's in standard form. In this example, what is the slope of the line? What we need to do is we need to get y by itself. We need to put it in slope intercept form. So first, let's move the 4x from the left to the right. So let's subtract both sides by 4x. So negative 2y is equal to negative 4x plus 8. We can't combine these two because they're not like terms. Now let's divide every term by negative 2 to get y by itself. So y is equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2, that's positive 2. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. So the slope is the number in front of x, so it's equal to 2.